in the region? Well, I, I think that the, the biggest contribution is economic. Um, you know, we're in a region where we don't have the type of demand that merits investment in large-scale coal plants principally, which um, many times are what the most economic option are. Um, so we're, we're stuck in most of these countries, with the exception of Costa Rica, with a lot of thermal generation from fuel oil based plants and diesel plants. So renewable energy uh, has a unique opportunity in the region to come in and displace that fuel oil and diesel uh, driven plants with much cheaper op options. So this isn't the United States or Europe or other places where we're competing with much more economical um, fossil fuel based alternatives. You know, renewable energy here is a economic uh, benefit. So, you know, what we see is almost every new uh, renewable megawatt that comes onto the system in Central America is directly displacing a very dirty, very expensive megawatt. Um, so, you know, in a nutshell, the, the biggest the biggest boon of renewable energy in Central America is the economic one because it, it, it takes dirty, expensive uh, uh, supply off the grid. There, there are probably lots of um, barriers, but I, you know, and I'll speak more towards what is our area, which is wind. I mean, I, we focus predominantly on wind power, and the biggest obstacle, in my opinion, um, is the lack of a clear regional framework on uh, inter-country uh, transmission rights. Um, for example, if we take the case of Nicaragua, Nicaragua, or Costa Rica for that matter, has a huge, huge potential in wind power. Much more potential than what the country could actually absorb as an electricity grid. Um, and, but, but Honduras, El Salvador, other countries in the region could very easily take on that, that, that wind power to great benefit to their populations. But um, as currently constructed, it's impossible for anyone to realistically build a project on that assumption because you can't get transmission rights for longer than a year. So, uh, well, what would happen? Someone would construct a project in Nicaragua wanting to sell power to El Salvador and they would go to the bank and the bank would say, it looks like a great project, you've got a good site. You even got a good uh, bankable off-taker in the destination country who's willing to buy. But you can only get transmission rights for a year. Not interested. Done. End of story. And so, uh, because if a bank can't see a buyer that can legitimately sign up for a term, the, the length of a, of, a, of a loan, they're not going to be interested because they're going to left, they'd be left out hanging after that first year is done, and they're not going to take the risk to assume that you can extend. So, um, you know, I can't speak for all types of energy, but I can speak to wind a little bit. And something that I see, particularly in the countries that have such a great wind resources, predominantly Nicaragua and in Costa Rica, is that the lack of a, of, a, of a clear framework that promotes uh, regional access, access to the regional market is a huge obstacle. I think that all the, all the countries have um, fairly well developed incentive strategies, whether they be fiscal incentives or otherwise, or just a national focus. And I think that you have seen very serious advancement, principally in the last five, six years in the region. You know, you've seen um, if I'm not mistaken, almost by the end of this year, almost 300 megawatts of new renewable energy installed in Nicaragua. That's that's amazing in the last six years, and we're talking about over half a million dollars worth of private investment. Um, we see what happened in the bid that was recently done in Guatemala, where um, they were asking for 800 megawatts and they, they, they received over 1,500 megawatts of offers, most of those being renewable. Um, so there's great interest in the region. There's great interest and there's actually been real projects executed in the region at rates that we, the history has not seen in Central America. So I think that that's a fantastic indicator. Um, you know, it's challenging going forward because kind of the low-hanging fruit are, are gone now. The problems are now more complicated, but there's um, interest from the private sector. Um, you know, the international development banks have shown interest in lending to these projects, and these projects have been successful up to this point. 
Um, you know, we're going to have to define a little bit more how we, how exactly we want to move forward. But you know, the the recent history has been very bright, I think, in Central America. So that's, the, I think, that's a very good sign. I think that the, I think that the big task for the for the region and the is to get all of the. The, the national entities on the dispatch regulation side and on the regional operation and uh, interconnection side being CREA and EOR um, along with their counterparties in the different countries together with an agenda how are we going to make this CPAC line work mm -hmm. you know um, CPAC is a very ambitious project it should be finishing soon uh, it's taken a lot longer than anyone anticipated but it's it's without a doubt it'll be ready within the next couple of years. Um, I don't think that the countries themselves, and I certainly know that the private companies that are involved in the region don't understand how to take advantage of this really massive infrastructure project that's going to connect the region. Um, so, I mean, I, mean, I think that the, the, the test is, can we all get together and form a policy that will allow us to take advantage of this, this gigantic investment that the countries have undertaken um, under the auspice of being able to promote renewables and create greater access and lower rates for the for the users in the country, um, how do what do we have to do? You know, it's not uh, it's not a question of we can do it. It's a question of you know how are we going to get it done, and that's not clear yet. So that's the big challenge for the region.